Hey guys, this is Jordan Crook with TechCrunch, and today I have with me Eric Anderson, who is the VP of Samsung's products, content and product, content solutions. And product solutions, exactly. Um, so we're here to talk about the new smart TVs, but I first wanted to just kind of get your take on kind of the, the state of the industry as it is. We've got a lot of different channels coming in as far as TVs yeah. are concerned, with regular TVs, smart TVs, and we have 3D TVs, we have the boxy box, we have the Roku. Um, where do you see smart TVs playing into that ecosystem, and, and what do you think the future of smart TVs is as a whole? I mean, the smart TVs are, are just part of this uh, family of smart devices that are proliferating with uh, consumers right now. It's all about access and discovery of content. And so even though the TV has traditionally been about what you see in your living room from your set-top box or what have you, now with over-the-top capabilities and, and Wi-Fi access, you can now start getting content and accessing things from accounts that you've been using on your tablets and your smartphones for months and years now. So it, it's really about more smart access, more control, more choice of when you want to watch things and where you want to watch things. I think, now, in addition to that though, I think it's also about better integration with companion devices. What are the types of new viewing experiences that you can get, whether it be live sports and, and see the live sports game on the TV and, and have matching companion statistics and replays that are happening on your companion device. So what's, where we're really starting to head is that end screen experience, that multi-screen experience, and getting TV producers, big brand media, really excited about how they might even change the programming to be more intelligent programming to match up with the more smart devices. All right, okay, so today we talked about um, you know, smart interaction and kind of the way that we're, we're interacting with our TV um, when it comes to hand gestures, voice, voice controls, and stuff, stuff like that. So how do you think that that, that, in, that feature in and of itself kind of helps Samsung build out its ecosystem with regards to all share and um, you know, multi-platform, multi, uh, cross-device yeah. kind of sharing and, and uh, an ecosystem like that? I think the smart devices um, from tablets again and, and smartphones have taught different generations and different people different ways to actually interact with their devices. How many kids do you see nowadays walk up to a 55 inch screen and go like this and they realize, ah, it's not touch sensitive. What we're doing with the different input methods is just addressing the personalization that's already happening around us. It's not that we're introducing to say, this, is, this keyboard's going to be the next greatest keyboard, or this gesture control is going to take over the, the traditional remote control. It's just giving people additional ways to interact with content in ways that they want to. That they, and every family member might be different in how they want to do it. But it also helps us in exploring different ways to, to extend new content and new ways of interacting with that content, not only with the TV, but also with other devices. Right, cool. So what do you think that um, really threatens Samsung as far as the smart TVs are concerned? Because you can go out and buy a smart TV from Samsung for, I don't know, a grant $1,500, you know, right. or you can go get a boxy box or a Roku, you know, and obviously the value proposition is different there because yeah. there's more that's offered with a Samsung smart TV. Um, but what do you think as far as consumers are concerned and when they're approaching the decision, um, do you consider that to be a threat and, and kind of how is Samsung addressing that? In general, no. Um, I think the more that consumers are getting used to smart interaction over the type, types of content, the better. Not every TV in your house, we're not presumptuous to think, is one, going to be Samsung and, and two, going to be a brand new TV. You have existing TVs that move from room to room. And those boxes are important for that. And whether it's our Blu-ray boxes or the Roku boxes or otherwise, to be able to have more choice and control over the old units, that's important. I think what we're working on is, think of that loyalty loop that happens when you experience getting access to different content and discovering new content. And you walk into your retailer and you're thinking about, wow, what devices actually allow me to access my Pandora or my Netflix or my Vudu or my Hulu. And what we want people to, to, to have top of mind is, I know Samsung is an open platform and allows me to actually um, connect with and access all of that stuff that I've been investing in for so many months and years now. And so that's, that's really what we're concentrating on is that next loyalty loop of purchase to think about Samsung as that brand of access and discovery and open.
Well, I mean, in terms of threats, if we're talking about the next kind of loop of uh, buyers, yeah. uh, how do you feel about you know Apple's Apple's TV and uh, and Google TV and and those other kind of big name companies that are that are also competing for for mindshare? There's a obviously huge affinity and loyalty with Apple and with Google and Android. Um, and I think one thing you've seen from Samsung is we like challenge. We, we like to be challenged out in the market. And that's one thing that Samsung does great is to be able to anticipate you know, what's happening next and, and try to you know, execute better than anybody else. That being said, the difference I think that we're trying to do is um, respect the current TV experience and not necessarily go light years ahead but take stair steps, I guess, to, to bring people into this new, smarter environment. With our TVs, you can choose between a smart hub and your set-top box, and you can have familiarity with how you're interfacing and interacting and getting different types of programming. With some other offerings that could be coming into the market, maybe you don't have that extension or that reach back to a traditional experience. They're asking you to make a quantum leap into a new experience that may not be all that comfortable for everybody. So we're, we're somewhere in between there. We want to get people into the future, but we also want to respect you know, the traditional methods. It's a companion device. It is a communal device. It's not a personal device. So you got to respect everybody who's going to be in that living room. So, so what are the top five uh, downloaded apps so far? And kind of where, what do you see as far as content is concerned? What do you see really booming um, on, on Samsung smart TVs? So I made a list for you here. We need a drum roll. How sweet. Um, so surprisingly enough, 47% of most of the apps downloaded are video in nature, right? Crazy. Shocker. Right? Yeah. But um, you know, some of the top ones, YouTube has been number one or number two or three for two years now. And people want more choice over that type of content. Um, Pandora is, uh, I think Pandora said um, approximately people are using the TV for music, I think it was about two to three hours a day on an average. Some people are leaving it on longer than that, but you know, it's, that's there. Voodoo, really great H, uh, 1080p HD type of content. Social TV, which we experimented with and we didn't think it was gonna be a big um, success, but people actually are starting to have their social networks uh, overlay on their TV while they're watching programming. And that's been a big download and usage for the last uh, probably six, eight months. CNBC, huge, launched about three months ago and just blew the doors off of people wanting that type of content on demand. Um, Hulu Plus and then sports, MLB, especially right now, is getting downloaded like crazy because we're heading into the spring season. And uh, sports, I think, to your second question, I think um, one of the th areas, genre sets that we're really going to concentrate on is sports because we think that that is something that's, one, ideal for the living room. Two, it's great for a communal experience. It's great for social experience as well. And nothing looks better on a 1080p 55 inch you know, HD TV than you know, watching a game. So uh, look for a lot more in that area from us. Awesome, okay, so I'm, final question. I've taken up too much of your time already, but um, final question is, I, I'm, I'm kind of getting the feeling, or at least this is my opinion, that apps aren't necessarily what people want on their TV. That's not like the end goal user experience. The best thing would just be have the content kind of kind of come to you and, and like you said, smart interaction and kind yeah. of find a way to interact with it rather than surfing through apps the way people do on almost every other device. They want the content that the apps provide, not necessarily yeah. the apps themselves. So uh, is there any move towards kind of uh, pushing the apps out of there? Are we, are we using this to just kind of supplement cable rather than, rather than um, substituting it for cable? Um, this is a great topic because I, I think you're onto something. You obviously know your space. Um, we're not announcing anything in the world of automatic content recognition, but it is fair to say that everybody's looking into that. And our partners, whether it be TV broadcasters and networks and big brand media, everybody is kind of interested in that supplemental, very fluid, natural experience of intelligent programming entering your living room, waking up your tablet along with your TV and getting a secondary experience, but you didn't have to launch any app. So yeah, with the new type of connectivities that we have, uh, all share play and some other things, the TV and the tablet can talk to each other in the background. In the future, TV broadcasters can actually start creating and weave in 
intelligent program secondary types of content in the programming and then it actually comes alive right there on your coffee table and you can do polling and you can do you know, uh, couponing and transactions and things like that, all relevant to the program that you're seeing on your TV. So yes, I think the market is heading in that direction, but I think it's supplementary to apps. I don't think it's a replacement. I don't think anything that we're doing today is a replacement for something we did last year. It's all building and it's more personalization. And I think as people start to proliferate how they use smart devices, there's no way that you can dictate how people do it. You just got to give them the tools to experiment and come up with something that's really interesting to them. Right. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your time, Eric. We really appreciate it. And that's it from Samsung's media event here in NYC. I'm Jordan Crook with TechCrunch.